Hi everyone, I'm Ashley Norton, Education Developer here at Blick Art Materials, and I'm really excited to bring you this Hummingbird Acrylic Painting Demonstration. We're going to be using Utrecht Artists Acrylic Paints on a stretched canvas. This is 8x8 and it has a nice 2-inch border, so if you want, you can instantly, once you're done with your painting, hang it right on the wall without framing, or you can frame if you choose. Uh, you can also paint that edge if you like totally up to you. Um, we're going to be painting from reference and I've got this stunning image of a hummingbird that we're working from. Of course you can always paint from observation. Maybe you're taking the time while the weather is nice to go hiking in the mountains which is a perfect place to spot hummingbirds and you can capture all of those jewel-like tones, the emerald and ruby, using the colors that we have here today. Make sure you check out the bundle page where you can find the reference image, all the paints, and brushes and materials that we're using uh, as well as a little drawing that's going to help you get a head start on your artwork. So uh, with your blank canvas I would recommend applying a couple coats of gesso with a large brush if you can and that'll help to uh, bring the canvas back to bright white and make it nice and taut for when you get started. And then to uh, get this drawing um, once that gesso is dry to get this drawing on the canvas, uh, you can just take a little piece of graphite transfer paper. You're going to put that graphite side down. You're going to take your drawing and you're going to go drawing side up and take a pencil and uh, work over that drawing with applying pressure. And you're going to have this nice little sketch that can help you get started. Of course, you can always make that sketch yourself. You don't have to use this one. Um, challenge yourself. And uh, I think you'll be surprised that just by trying, you'll get a lot farther than you ever thought you could. So let's go ahead and get started on this painting. I'm going to show you some techniques that is, uh, are going to make you want to get started immediately because the acrylic paints are fast drying and they're really easy to mix. So let's jump right in. I just have a couple of containers of water over here to my right and I have these gorgeous synthetic brushes that we're going to be using. Uh, they have a little color code that tells you if it's a filbert or if it's a flat or if it's a round. And of course, uh, we always want to use a size appropriate to the space that we're covering on our canvas. Uh, for this painting, I want to quickly get that background color and information down so that we can get started painting away on our subject matter. So um, we could always mix green, yellow, and blue uh, in any shade that you like, but I really like this turquoise color. I try to use it in almost all of my artwork because I think it's a really versatile color um, that gives you a little bit more depth uh, than just using your basic uh, yellow and blue color combination. But with that being said, I'm going to eat my own words because I do still want to use uh, yellow and blue. Because what I'm doing while I'm working on getting these paints down, uh, what I'm doing is I'm going to create some of that variation that you see in the background. And I also want to make sure that my background color doesn't um, combat with the emerald green that we see here in the hummingbird itself. So it's important to um, be cognizant of the variation in greens that you see in the subject matter to help you uh, get a little closer to uh, a true color match. So I'm setting up my color palette as always with analogous colors uh, situated close to each other. So I have my turquoise, cadmium free yellow light and ultramarine blue to start. And I'm just going to urge these out of the way. I'm also going to make sure that I have plenty of white to get me going because you always need a lot of white when you are painting with acrylics and oils in particular, a lot less so with watercolor. And then I've got my handy pipette um, with uh, clean water and one container that I'll use for uh, keeping my brushes clean, and I'm just going to add a little bit of water, just a little bit, not much, um, just enough to keep my paints open and help me get started. That's going to thin down the paint just enough. And let's take, well first let's get some water on our brush, and that helps to increase the mobility 
um, especially if you're using brand new brushes, go ahead and give them a little dip in the water. And that makes them a little less stiff when you go to open up your acrylics. Now this is our turquoise. We can see that really nice, deep um, emerald green. We're gonna really leverage that uh, when we go to painting the hummingbird. But to help create some unity in our palette, we can use the turquoise to make this really bright green. And so I'm mixing that with yellow. And we can even mix that down even further to a darker, more um, evergreen when we mix the blue. So here we've got a nice medium green. We can also add black to that to help get it going. So just a quick tip on color mixing. And I think we like this medium green to start. And I'm going to go ahead and use my largest brush. And let's quickly fill in some of this color information. But we want a little bit of variation as we go. So I'm going to have some fun. And as we paint this background, I'm going to bring in some of that teal and some of that yellow. And it just gives us, um, it keeps it from being one flat color, right? It gives it just a little bit of dimension. Now, because I'm not using a medium today, you can use uh, any painting medium that you like that can help you make a glaze. But for this, I'm using the straightforward paints because uh, I really want a quick drying time and I want to show off these colors um, as they are so much ready to use right out of the tube. So the Utrecht Artist Colors are gonna give you a really great color selection and they are a professional quality. So uh, you're not going to struggle with some of that color mixing like you might um, with uh, say a more student grade color. It is great for a beginner for both of those th reasons though because you get great color mixing, great color economy, with a professional quality. All right. So this is a size 18 filbert. And so it means that um, instead of being just a flat or a round, it has a nice curved edge, which really can make it perfect. Um, one, for filling in these larger spaces, uh, but also for getting some of these curves achieved like around this hummingbird beak. It's such a delicate creature to deal with. So we want to capture as much detail as possible uh, because that's what's so unique about the hummingbird is the incredible amount of color and detail uh, in its shape for being such a small uh, petite animal. So we're going to leverage this brush shape to get us where we need to be shape-wise. Okay, and when you're using different size brushes, always remember, as a rule, I might have mentioned this before, use the brush shape that's appropriate to what you're painting. I could certainly use a flat brush if that's what I had available, but I really like this filbert, again, because I can get around those more complex shapes. All right, so let's take some of this brighter color. Let's brighten this up. Now you might wanna apply a couple of coats to the background. So maybe we start here and we get this information down, but you might find that when your paint dries, it's still a bit transparent. And I would encourage you to continue to follow this process of applying um, a variation, uh, a varied amount of yellow, blue, and turquoise to kind of get you where you need to be. I'm going to carefully reach over here. Hopefully you can still see. And just using the edge of my brush, I can carefully navigate my way 
around these curved edges and I'm going to go all the way up to the edge of my drawing and then fan that paint out because we don't want um, we don't want it to look like we outlined the bird right we do want to outline the bird but then we want to vary our brush stroke so that it doesn't look like an outline so you just fan it out and apply paint in different directions and it'll look a little more natural there you go already starting to see that bird present itself carefully work your way around the tail feathers using the edge of the brush to signify that space in between the plumage Okay, same here. Use the edge of the brush to signify that space in between. And once you have this sort of outline worked out, then you can go back, let's get it here too, Boom, now we're pretty much where we want to be. Let's use some of this paint and fill in some of these transparent areas. So when your paint goes on, you might say, oh wow, okay, well I've, I'm done. I've covered my background, uh, I'm where I need to be. But wait for that layer to dry because you might get, let's keep that light, you might get some transparent areas. And you want to make sure that your painting looks done. That's really what we're after. Um, and the way that you do that is by covering all the white space. Cover that canvas weave. Because the more we can see the weave, the less we believe in the artwork, right? Uh, we don't want to see raw canvas. We want to see paint coverage. So. You can also add a little bit of white. Pro tip for you, adding a little bit of white to your paint can help to make it more opaque. Now it'll also lighten your color, so keep that in mind, but it can help you if you want a little more opaque coverage. All paints aren't going to be opaque right out of the tube, so that's something to consider uh, when you are picking your colors. You know, always take a look double check, you know, is this transparent? What kind of coverage am I going to get? Okay, make sure your edges are also covered. And of course, with these um, wide profile canvases, you can also paint the sides. It's totally up to you. I like to see a little bit of the process uh, come through with um, how we deal with the sides. I think it kind of tells the story of how the piece was created. All right. Now again, continue that process until you get the coverage that you need uh, and let those layers dry. But let's go ahead and keep moving and we're going to um, place some of our uh, base colors in an underpainting process uh, to start to lay the groundwork for how this uh, hummingbird is going to come to life. I think the easiest way to do that is to use warm and cool grays because if we're looking back at our reference image here, just quickly uh, from observation, you can find this on the bundle page, but you can see, um, you know, as as nature tells its story uh, and works to camouflage the bird, you know, you're going to have those natural grays and browns. So I see these um, grays here and these browns here and a combination of brown and gray in the wings. So let's start with that as a base layer uh, and get that information down uh, so that we can um, see some of that natural 
uh, that natural hair come out, uh, plumage color come out. And then uh, we have those jewel tones that we talked about, the emeralds, the quinacridone. You know, um, we're going to have so much fun uh, bringing those colors forward. But first, we always want to lay the groundwork. I think you're going to have a lot easier time uh, with your painting process if you remember that an underpainting is going to do half the job for you. So if I went into my painting thinking, I'm going to knock this all out in one go, I would encourage you to think again. I would encourage you to uh, apply layer after layer of color in a way that builds it up from your lightest to your darkest. And following that simple rule is going to get you the coverage that you need. Because if I go in it thinking, I'm going to do this all in one take, um, you might struggle with feeling like it's done. And really that's what we're, we're after. We want to feel like it's done. So on the right side of my palette, I've set up my neutrals. I have my titanium white, my ivory black, and then I have a raw sienna. And that's going to give me just enough of a... Um, the raw sienna is going to give me just enough brown. And that ivory black is going to give me just enough gray. So let's mix these down with plenty of white. And get them nice and light. Because if we went dark full force, then the layers that we paint on top of that might be too dark as well. OK. I'm going to take a little bit of this white and raw sienna and mix a little black. Now, if I want a cooler gray, I might just stick with black and white. If I want a warmer gray, I'm going to bring in this raw sienna because it's going to have more of a light yellow. Um, this is a perfect warm gray that we've got going here. And notice it's just a little smidgen of paint with a little bit of water. It's going to be transparent when we lay it down. And we want to uh, get some coverage here for our underpainting. Now remember, we want to leave, this is broken out really nicely into shapes in our drawing. So we want to leave enough space where our bright whites are going to go so that the collar of the bird remains bright white. So paint in using this nice warm gray. Now we can cool it down with more black or warm it up with more raw sienna. So follow that as a rule, and I think this could become a lot easier to manage from a color perspective. All right, and then let's get a little bit of variation. Let's get a little bit cooler up here in the wings. Okay, I'm using the flat brush and it's just the right shape for what I'm dealing with. Now this could be a little dark, so let's warm it back up and get some variation. You know, everything doesn't have to be one color here, one color there. Bring your paints together, bring your colors together to create a unified look and feel. All right, we can bring this into the wings. And what's nice about this color mixture being mixed with water is that we have a really nice transparent quality happening. And I can still see a little bit of my sketch. And I want to make sure that I use my brush stroke, the power of the brush stroke, to keep that drawing intact. Because one of the things that maybe we don't realize, um, especially if you're a beginning painter, um, is that painting is still a drawing process, but you're drawing with color. So you get that sketch down, and that's one part of the painting process. But really, you continue to draw and draw and draw. And you're just doing that with 
more color. So I'm maintaining the shape of the drawing with the brush stroke, which is why that brush shape is so important. All right, now, if we're working from observation, and we are, then we're going to continue to add that variation. And while the paint is still workable, you can start to blend those colors oh so nicely. Now look, we're drawing to continue to keep the plumage on the wings separated. So we've got a nice texture started there. Okay. And be expressive with your brush stroke marks. Word of advice. Um, one single type of brush stroke isn't going to get you where you need to be all the time. You know, it is helpful to um, bring texture into your work through the mark making process. And if you are just starting, my best advice to you would be to pick up a paintbrush or a pencil or watercolors and just start making marks. Uh, apply pressure on your brush in different ways. Lift it and let it go and see what happens. And that's going to teach you a lot about how your paintbrush works and about how to, um, how to leverage your brush to make the mark that you want it to make. So here I'm making, you know, short, quick brush strokes because it looks a little more like <clears throat> the feathers that I'm painting. We're getting a really nice base layer going here. All right, now let's wrap up this tail. It's a little more white um, and soon we'll work in um, those telltale uh, hummingbird plumage marks. I love these uh, very subtle kind of things, you know, that we want to try to capture along the way. And we're going to do that in our underpainting here. So let's get this down. And for our tail, and the way I've set up my color palette, makes color mixing so easy. I keep my neutrals separate from the rest of my colors. And I'm not getting them muddy. I can easily go from the brown to the black and the colors are working together instead of combining in a way that I don't like. So. All right, keep drawing into your painting. All right, now let's get some of those colors down. Um, you know, let's brighten this thing up. Uh, I'm gonna clean my brush. I'm gonna get these whites worked in so that we can move on to those jewel tones that we talked about, you know, the emerald and the ruby that are so signature to a hummingbird, but let's make sure we make a space for the bright whites because those are also really important. All right, got white there. We've got some white around the eyes. And we've got some lightness in the plumage that we don't want to forget, right? So. Keep drawing. And we've got a little bit of white here. Always paint in the direction. It's all about the brush stroke today. Always paint in the direction that your subject matter is telling you. And make your marks that way. We've got a really nice 
blend happening here. Got some lightness. All right, now let's get those colors worked in. Um, actually, we'll do the beak last because that's black uh, and we don't want to muddy this up too much. We might change brushes. We've also got that um, signature big black eyeball um, that hummingbirds have that we're going to want to work in once this paint kind of lightens up. So let me make a quick space here for that so that when that dries, we can work that in. Let's get some color. Uh, let's start with the green, because we already have it out. And I'm just going to use my smallest brush. This is a round brush. And I'm going to use a little bit of white. I'm not going to go full color um, just yet. I'm going to go a little bit off color while I can um, because again we're working light to dark and we want to uh, build the color layers on top so you don't have to go all in go as much as you're comfortable with and you can see here that the turquoise is helping to differentiate that color from our background. You want to keep that in mind. It's another reason why it's good to add a little bit of white. We can go a little bit brighter with our green if we want to by adding that yellow. And let's get that green from the plumage. And we're using our brush stroke to kind of tell that story of the shape, lightening where we need to. We can blend the colors on the surface while they're open if you want to. Um, you know, we don't have to be so hard on ourselves to consider everything as a strict rule when we're painting. You know, you're really making up the rules as you go. It's always good to have a couple of starting guidelines, but uh, be easy on yourself, especially if you're just a beginner. And get that information down. And let's get this beak while we are using our round brush. Take this gray, we don't have to go all the way to the darkest color just yet. So use that detail brush and hold your hand nice and steady. That's pretty dark. That's pretty believable. And there you go. Just to get started. Got a little bit of a smile. And while we're waiting for that white around the eye to dry before we put the eyeball in there, let's take some of this uh, quinacridone red. And we're going to use that for um, the ruby throat. I'm going to just use a little bit of it because we don't need a ton of paint. It's a small hummingbird and it's a small piece, so you don't have to get uh, all your paint unloaded at once, you know, use a little bit and let's mix this with white because we don't have to go full color. We've been talking about working light to dark. So if you need to add white, you go right on ahead and do that. And I think you'll have an easier time building your layers. Think of it as laying the groundwork for what's to come. Okay, and because your paints are transparent, I think we talked about this several minutes ago, because your paints are transparent, that's why we're building them up layer after layer. 
So they're not necessarily made to go full color all at once. They're made to be built upon layer after layer. Let's get this little edge here going with the green so we can get as close as possible. Oops, that's a little too much water. So a little uh, teachable moment about taking your time when you clean your brushes <laughs> and making sure that you have some way to absorb that excess water because you could have a little blowout like I just did. Of course we can recover. That's the beauty of acrylic paints. You build them layer after layer and you can cover each one as you go. There we go. Already we're starting to see this bird come to life. Now let's get the eye worked out. Not too much water because we want it to stick. The water is going to act like a thinner and so it breaks your paint right down and so um, that changes its stickiness. So the less water, the more sticky it will be. Um, and that's another reason why you paint your transparent layers first, uh, simply due to adhesion. Okay, so here's a really good base for our underpainting. Uh, we're going to continue to build these layers. For example, um, you're going to basically follow this process of, you know, um, drawing, building transparent layers, uh, using your brush stroke to tell the story of the plumage and working that more and more. So let's move on to our next step to where we get to a point where the paint is dry and we're comfortable bringing it home with those final layers of the painting. So with a good base, you can get really, really far. So I'm going to bring out a dry piece. And here I've started to break out even further the differences between my darkest darks and my lightest lights. Also, look at how we're dealing with the edge of the painting. Take your brush, use the flat edge, for example, use this um, red flagged flat and use that crisp edge to do your edging around the bird. And that's where you're going to get that nice, clean, crisp feeling. Continue to do that edging. But here, what I wanna do is I wanna bring this painting home with you guys. So, uh, well, I don't wanna bring it home with you. I wanna bring it home metaphorically. <laughs> Stay with me. Okay, um, like to have a little fun. So uh, we've already got our colors pretty much mapped out on this palette. Now we really want texture. It's back to that brush stroke. You want to get that brush stroke going uh, and you want to sell the idea of the plumage um, for this bird. So this hummingbird, they're not just a bird, they're a hummingbird. So, which is why we're painting it today, extra special. All right, let's get back to clean brushes. I like to, um, I'm going to show this, when I clean my brushes, um, I like to move them in a figure eight along the bottom of the jar and that kind of uh, creates a friction that uh, can help you to get your brushes just a little bit cleaner than just, you know, shoving them uh, into the, the bottom of your water container and then make sure you press them out. All right, so uh, first things first, we can always add more background color. I think we're gonna save that step for last. Let's take, um, we're gonna mostly deal with our smallest brushes until later, so let's focus on those. And I'm just gonna transition here a little bit, get a nice clean, cleaner, surface 
for paper towel. And let's start with our flat brush. All right, we're gonna use the same colors as before, but we might want them to be a little punchier. So we might use more of the pigmented color and a little bit less of the color that we're mixing it with. I'm gonna start with my raw sienna and I'm gonna work it into the areas where I see more brown. So I see brown here, around the eyes, and in the wings. So let's work it around there. Let's go, let's do it. And just short spurts, little brush strokes. will make it look a little more like plumage. Now, we're even gonna take it one step further with our detail brush, our round brush, and we're going to really get into that plumage and help to bring that texture forward with the brush stroke. All right, and this is, um, a, a really good moment to start to see how the transparent, the building of transparent layers is starting to work. And we can bring a little bit of this in. I like to keep the painting unified by um, continuing to work color into some of these different areas. Well, let's not forget these little spots that the hummingbird has. Okay, and I think we're good with the browns for now. Let's take a lighter color, a little bit more white, and let's work on these wings. We wanna lighten them up, bring light into them, and that's your shading. Make sure that that canvas underneath gets covered a little more every time. Because even though you think you might not be missing it, when you go back and you really take a look, you can see moments where the canvas weave is still visible. And you wanna take care of that. Make sure that you get the coverage you need. All right, and here, keep that texture moving, right? Now let's start to deal with all this white, you know? It doesn't look uh, immediately like there is a lot of white there, but um, as we start to move through this, we see it more and more. It's important to note where your light lights and dark darks are so that you can make the contrast that you need to really sell the imagery. All right, now let's create some separation in our plumage. Um, Let's keep talking about transparent colors. Uh, what you're going to get that I think is really nice about building transparent layers is that as you build each layer, you see the last one just a little bit underneath. And that gives you this um, kind of whimsical, um, it kind of tells a more whimsical story, right? So. Um, to see where the colors are blending, to see the story of how the painting was made, and think, oh, you know, look at all the layers that you spent time, um, all the colors that you spent time observing, all the layers that you spent time creating, and you see the story of how the painting was made through that. And that's what's so nice about something that's handmade, is seeing the brush stroke come forward. All right, let's keep with our whites. 
Let's go nice and bright on the belly. Use your brush stroke. It's going to be all about the brush stroke from this point on. And layering your colors. Make them a little more believable every time. Separate that plumage. And down here with these little spots, there's a bright white ring around them. We can use that to tell the story. Good. All right, and we even want to bring some of that lightness around. Some of that highlighting just really helps to break out that color. Okay. All right. Let's bring out that gem-like green color up here as we continue to use our brush stroke. Short, quick marks that break up the layer underneath and help tell the color story. All right, let's bring that green in back down here. Plumage of the tail. I can easily make this green color pop because I've got these grays built up. And use your brush stroke in both directions. And I'm going to try not to talk too quiet as I get really focused on the details here, but uh, I think you'll find uh, it's hard not to just get totally engrossed in the hummingbird's uh, magical colors. You know, it just has such a whimsical energy and you want to capture every moment uh, when you see a hummingbird. And I think the same idea applies uh, when you're trying to uh, replicate what the hummingbird looks like in your painting. You, know, you want to capture that um, that little piece of magic that uh, it's giving you when you first lay eyes on it. Now let's go back to our quinacridone red and build another layer. Make your brush stroke. We have these little shapes in the plumage. And you can even add a little bit of black and make this a lot darker, which I think we're going to do here. Because we're going to spend some time with this mark making process, making this come forward. But we want each layer to dry. So let's continue to refine what we already have here. Let's get this beautiful eye. A oh, little too much water. We don't want to break it down too, too much. All right, let's get that beak. Be careful, just use the very edge of your brush. This is still a brush stroke. This is still a mark making process, even when you're trying to paint a very thin line. And they kind of have a little smile, don't they, in the beak? So we've got that. Okay. All right. And from here, it's just refining the details, right? So once you get, let's make this a warmer, a warmer black. Once you get to a certain point in your painting, uh, building layer after layer, you're going to realize, oh wow, it's already time to bring this home. 
that's when you go for that contrast. And a lot of times, putting a little bit of edging, going back to that drawing process with your dark darks, and separating out the plumage and darkening the areas where objects meet. That's one of the best lessons I ever learned in drawing class in college. It's to help to identify different shapes by darkening where they meet. So at all the joints, create a little bit of separation. It doesn't have to be an outline per se, you know, a single solid outline isn't going to help you necessarily, but creating some separation around edges and tips and places where things meet. There's your secret, drawing secret for the day. Okay. And I think it really helps because already I can see these wings starting to uh, show their uh, separate uh, plumage. We're almost done. So if you've stayed with us, I hope that you've checked out the bundle page. But if you're just joining, um, check out that page. All the materials are going to be here. And you'll also find that reference image, which I think is super helpful to help you get started. Get your browns. All right. Now let's work in the body here a little bit as we um, bring some of this texture home. Let's not forget our spots. Darken your edges. I love working on the details and knowing that I'm getting close. All right. But let's take some gray and let's go back to that mark making process, right? It's a little dark. Let's add some more white. Just want a light gray and brush stroke, right? Put that brush stroke in to help break up some of those flat layers that we put in before. We're getting so close. I love watching a painting come together. All right, give it a great texture. That's why I love this brush set. You're getting all these different shapes, all these different sizes. Really helps to have a variety of brushes, a variety of palette knives, whatever it is that you're using. Um, you know, mix up your tool bag. Keep it varied. Now, I'm adding a little bit of black to my quinacridone red just to help darken it up a bit because it's not really red, it's more of a kind of maroon. So breaking it up with some darker colors is going to help separate. And we're gonna work this process over and over. Um, I think we're actually getting to a point where a couple more brush strokes and we're going to be all done. Um, of course, when it comes to this type of imagery, the, the level of doneness is completely uh, in the eye of the beholder. But I will say this, I think it's extremely important to remember to cover that canvas weave and, you know, break up the layers of your underpainting with your brush stroke. Keep that going and um, the more you devise these detail layers, 
the more complete your painting is going to feel. So let's bring it home. I love dealing with the wings and using the brush stroke to bring that together. Use the variety of colors that you have to tell the story of the plumage. All right. Now I just want to do one last final thing because as you know, I could stay here all day and paint with you uh, and add detail upon detail but one little thing I like to do, uh, I think this helps, you know, bring the color palette together. Let's just add some final brush strokes. It just brings it home. It just unifies that color palette just enough. Hit your edges, brighten them up. Use the power of the brush stroke. Well, I hope you enjoyed this hummingbird acrylic painting. I think you're really going to enjoy using the Utrecht Artist Acrylic Paints in transparent and uh, more opaque layers as you build uh, layer after layer to create more detail into subject matter as delicate as the hummingbird that we've dealt with today. So I hope you've enjoyed and we look forward to seeing you at our next demo.